And one of the problems with my channel today is that it's not uh, specific. And that, that's one of the tips I would give you all today if you're really into wanting to make some type of content is to have a niche market that you would focus on. But at this point, 2006, it's, it's the wild, wild west. No one knew what they were doing. Uh, I don't think anybody had any big production values. No, no one even knew for sure um, what this was going to, to, to happen to, 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 to be. I think at, at the beginnings of YouTube, it became a place that was uh, for illegally distributing material that you didn't own. So at first, you could put as big videos on there as you want. Then they limited it to 15 minutes. So that way, you'd have made two videos if you're going to put a sitcom up or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, the algorithms, the, the, the AI bots that they have today, didn't exist back then. Um, and I thought it as a greater that did make it a little restrictive. Now I'll be honest with you, I'll make films. Uh, if you're making an independent filmmaker, the shorter the film, the better. Uh, the longer you go, it just it's, it's kind of like writing. The more succinct your writing is, the better it is to read. The shorter the video you have, when you 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 cut to the bone, you cut to where you need to be at. You know, a ten minute video is so much better. Uh, than the long one, and um, we uh, we're well, I'm part of uh, I guess a headline um, this the, Nac the Nacogdoches Short Film Festival, and if any of y'all make films, I'd love for y'all to uh, submit. If you're in East Texas, it's free to submit. It's a free festival to come attend, and it's an easy date to remember. It's uh, April fifteenth, which is tax day. But anyways, so uh, that's a Saturday. So I think we actually get a couple more days because it's on a Saturday. Uh, it's in Nacogdoches on the campus of Stephen Foster State University where I teach at. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you're a filmmaker or just like short films, come on down. Um, and uh, I, I like to foster filmmaking in East Texas. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, uh, I will put on free events. Um, last year, uh, I think we did this thing about six weeks or eight weeks, and it was free entries. We got 1,400 entries from around the world. So I had to get some friends to go through there. I wasn't even uh, thinking about doing a foreign film section. Uh, but we had so many, I had one of my friends that's the expert on that, said, could you watch them, some of, watch these and give me like four or five of them that you think are the best? So this year, if you're not in East Texas, it's, it's five dollars to, to submit. And that has brought down the foreign entries in there, and so uh, to a reasonable amount, <laughs> it's not that, that we can't go through. But again, if you all are, make films here in East Texas, um, and Tyler's definitely in East Texas, right? So uh, it's, a free, it's free to, to submit uh, as well. So, um, anyways, kind of fast forward a little bit from that early days of, uh, of making YouTube. I really, and I really like that, that you can go to a site and one day you can see one thing and another day you see something else. And I kind of kept that same format with the YouTube channel that I have. One of my friends uh, at Open Mic Night, I play guitar also and I write songs, and um, he challenged me and said, hey, could you put a video on YouTube every day for a year? And I thought, yeah, I could. Uh, that was 2009. It's 2022. I still have done that. So I got almost, I got over 6,000 videos on YouTube. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of them aren't that good. I'm be honest. You know, a lot of them I'm, I'm making in 30 seconds. And one thing that I find with creativity is that your first instinct is typically the best when you when when you are writing or being an actor or, or composing music for a film or composing music in, 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 at all. When I sit down and, and write a piece of music for a classical guitar or when I'm writing a screenplay or whatever, whatever pops in my mind is what I'm going to roll with until I prove it's not good. Because that, that to be the first instinct, and you all take tests, remember standardized tests, they always tell you your first answer is probably the right answer unless you can prove it was wrong. And that is the one that we have something to do I think in a lot of ways it's because we as human beings, uh, for us to survive, we made a mistake, we were lunch. So if that was, what sound was that? Oh, okay, that's bad, we gotta run. If we didn't, uh, didn't acknowledge that, then we were lunch for some, somebody, for some animal or whatever, you know. So uh, I think that instinctively we kind of have that uh, in us to, to go with our intuitive. I always call it the, you know, we all got a spidey sense. You know, and for lack of a better way of putting it together, since we're at Comic Con, y'all know, you know, I'm Spider Man. And our Spidey sense protects us. It lets us know, hey, that's not right, something's going on, you know. 
uh, that instinct that's, that's inherent with all of us. Well, we, we use that for safety, but we can also use that spidey sense for creativity, is, is to, to roll with it and, and just be, be connected to it. Um, not that I'm a great singer, but one of the things that you try to do as a, a singer, remember a little baby, how loud a little child can scream? Because there's no resistance in their voice. And as we get older, we get real resistance. So as an opera, not that I'm an opera singer, not at all, but as an opera singer, you want to get rid of that resistance. And that's why you can get so loud and project and, and to fight those type of things. So uh, for, for creativity, I would suggest the same thing uh, for that. So um, some of the things now going from that, that early period of need to, to kind of a more of a middle period, this is where the corporations started seeing, hey, there's a lot of market share that's here. If I ask you out there, if you had a choice between giving up television or YouTube, I'm mean, gonna guess most of y'all would say you'd give up television. <laughs> and you know, when I was a kid, I you know I love TV. I love TV. If you would tell me 2022, I wouldn't watch TV at all. Then no, you're out of your mind. I love the 18. I love television. Um, but I find myself when I, you know, I'm subscribed to all the big services, I'm sure you all, you know, HBO and, and uh, Hulu and Netflix and all those. And I go in there and I find stuff I don't want to, there's nothing for me to watch. I go on YouTube, there's usually something for me to watch. And the thing that's really interesting to me is that I didn't want to dive into TikTok. I didn't want to do it at all. Um, Snapchat, I still never really, I know what it is, but I never really figured it out. It wasn't for me. I think you need to have, you need to have friends to do that. And I'm not going to have friends to snap or whatever. Instagram, I did, it's, it's, it's pictures and, and that I can understand. But TikTok, really quickly, it started creating videos that I like. Uh, videos about, you know, uh, computers and Commodore 64s, you know, nerdy type stuff. And I, I was thinking, this, this, this is, I can see why this gets to be really addictive and whatnot. So I started experimenting and putting um, videos on TikTok as well. And the big difference today uh, we're, we're kind of gone back to that early YouTube thing where 30 second videos are what we want. Uh, we want something that's short going on to the next thing. We don't want the five minute, the 10 minute, 30 minute videos on TikTok. Um, and that's expanding as well. And uh, I think right now uh, TikTok is the content uh, creating uh, mechanism right now. Will something else come along? Yeah. I mean, Friendster, and my, Friendster to MySpace, to Facebook, to, I guess, Instagram, or TikTok. What was that other one? I mean, Twitch is obviously still big. Uh, but they all, they all have kind of their own lifespans at some point. At some point, something will take over TikTok. Uh, but right now, if you're a content creator, that's where you can get a lot of views. And especially if you have a really specific niche area that you focus on. Uh, that, that if you're into you know, whatever, photography, cars, cosplays. Um, I see a lot of cosplayers on TikTok as well, talking about how to make their outfits and, um, you know, certain uh, famous uh, actors that you follow. Uh, and I think a lot of us understand that. Now, I guess the one thing about content creating is um, being the, the word influencer was something really interesting to me as well. Um, and can you make it a job? Yeah, some people do. Uh, but I kind of equate it with being an author, being a writer. I know a lot of writers. I know two that make a living writing. I know a lot of musicians. I know two, well, rather than one now, that makes a living by only playing. Everybody else, including myself, teaches. You got a day job as well. And so uh, being an influencer, uh, it does happen. It, it, it can happen. However, it is a, a lot of work. And I kind of think about this as well, as, and you, you all correct me if I'm wrong, you probably follow people on YouTube or TikTok, and at some point you stop. And I think it's like seasons. Seven years used to be a season for like Star Trek or you know whatever. You know, after seven, it would stop because it got to be too expensive to, to, to have it syndicated. Uh, that was the main reason why it would stop. So Star Trek, the original one, we got to that magic three seasons, so it had enough episodes to go to syndication. If that didn't happen, we may not even be here because uh, without Star Trek, I don't think we really have the, the, the Comic Cons, uh, at, least, at least the format that we have today. But, um, you know, after a couple of years of watching a TikToker, you just get tired of it. You, you're looking for another channel, you, 
you find something else and uh, um, go from there. Now, um, I made a, some money over the years with the, uh, on YouTube um, AdSense, and uh, uh, actually, this little film here, here, uh, the, some of the funding from that actually helps finance my feature film, The Rise of the Robots. So that was really cool. Honestly, today I don't make all anything at all. I'm going to have to pay for a couple of thumb drives every once in a while and some domain names and things like that. Uh, but there are YouTubers out there that can make you know quarter of a million dollars a year, maybe forty thousand dollars a year, and that's a, you know that's a real check uh, at, at some point. Um, there's a couple I've been under so long. There's a couple of folks that I think I've influenced. Um, one person was. Uh, Oh, what's his name? Uh, the one that is uh, reviews of food and, and, and suits, and he had uh, that one holiday um, with, a, with an energy drink. Anyways, uh, he, he commented on my, some of my early videos before he, his video, this channel blew up, and he's like so much bigger than I am now on there. Uh, but I think he, he always a comment. I like that you're wearing a suit and tie when you review a hamburger. Well, I teach. That's why I wear a suit and tie. I'm so used to wearing this is my uniform. So I'm just kind of this is what anything special is. Just like, that's what I how I dress when I go teach. And I made or make a video because I'm already dressed that way. Um, so it's kind of cool to think back that there's a few people out there who probably have influenced um, making helping them well and to go out there and make a YouTube channel. And, and of course, they believe me other than saying, "Hey, this one person did it as well." So uh, you go from there. Uh, I'll talk really briefly about gear, and you all got your phones. That's really all you need now. Uh, what I use a lot of times are lavaliers. Um, the, 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 the one thing like this, if you got a bad video, that's one thing. You can't hear it, that's another thing. And half of the day, you can get a hold of, uh, I'll just show you, I guess sometimes it's carry around with me. You can put this into your phone, and then this is a lavalier that's wireless. So that way you can, and this is good for like, I don't know, 20 feet. And so you can get good audio. Um, the rule of film school is a lot of their here is probably the best place to put it. Uh, I used to call it a hand on the length. Um, a microphone like this is on the length. You know, you got a dynamic microphone or a condenser microphone. You got a shotgun uh, microphone, you can go back a little bit further. So those are kind of the rules. You've either got a hand link, an arm link, or a body link. And that's basically what we use for audio. I go on the, on the set, and, and anybody that does film can do this, and I can get good audio just by looking where the boom operators at, or they got a lot of things going on, and whatnot. Lighting's another thing. I, didn't, I, I, I thought I'd put it in my bag before, but I, I did. You can get these lights for almost nothing now, these LED lights. Um, I don't know if the screen you really can't see it, but, I was showing some gear that they have in here as well. So, anyways, yeah, like these lights right here, uh, you can kind of pick them up for not too much money now. Uh, I paid sometimes twenty dollars for two lights that are run with a USB uh, phone charger, and now I got portable. I can go outside and I don't have to worry about a generator anymore. Uh, the last film I made, uh, I submitted something for the Louisiana Film Prize. I'm um, didn't get in, but that's okay. Uh, but I, went, I had to shoot everything in Shreveport, and um, just took a, I don't know, took four or five, uh, six lights out there with, that ran on batteries, or, or, or basically this, uh, use the, the USB phone chargers, and um, shot a film out there, put a wire bottle there on my actors, and um, went out there with one of my Canon cameras, and just went out there and filmed that. Um, and Nacogdoches, I know that place because I filmed so much there, but it was interesting filming in Shreveport, a place I haven't been at. Uh, well, I've been there, but I haven't filmed there, and so that was interesting kind of finding locations you can shoot at. So uh, it was fun, even though I didn't get in, it was fun to do that, and uh, I plan to put that film in some uh, um, film festivals. I'm sure Tyler has a film festival as well, right? There's also one there in LA. There's a couple, yeah, so. Yeah, there's a couple of local. So, uh, um, yeah, and film festivals are fun. I, I enjoy doing it. It's a great uh, craft to, 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 to use that skill. And one reason, you know, I, I graduated with an MFA in, in uh, 2014. Honestly, I learned so much more about filmmaking after I was done with film school. Uh, this film would be so much better today because uh, I just know so much more about uh, putting it in.
lighting and the cameras and lenses and all that kind of stuff. And not everybody's a gearhead. Yeah, I understand. Not everybody wants to learn all those parts of it. But happily, you know, this your camera, if you get it like this close, it's going to have good audio. You know, if you're not next to a highway, it's going to be fine. You know, uh, go find a window. Don't stand in back of the window. Have the window shine the light on your face to get that nice little definition. And you got something that looks looks good uh, as well. And honestly, today on YouTube, you can go look, look, look at some live tutorials as well as a million other people out there talking about lighting and sound and editing and all these things. And um, that really, uh, today you get a film school by watching the internet. And I, I constantly go on there with the new technologies that come out there. We, we're going from the DSLR revolution now to the mirrorless cameras. And honestly, uh, I bought that camera there. It's kind of broke. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an iPhone guy and it's an Android, but the camera is like 48 megapixels. And it doesn't stick to the field. And I thought, this is great. And uh, because it's not my main phone, I got uh, like a lot of storage on it so I can use it to record our videos as well. So uh, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, the other thing I like is a tripod. You can see that tripod that's there. Uh, that makes it worse steady. I know a lot of folks like the shaky cam stuff, and that's cool, but I'm old. I like to see something that's this steady when I, when I look at it. And it, for me, when I edit, it's a lot easier to edit with a steady shot to a steady shot to a steady shot. Uh, and again, this is a stylistic uh, part of that as well. So today, you know, if you have your phone, which most of you all have a phone, a lot of it costs somewhere between 10 and 20 dollars. A light will cost the same thing, twenty to sixty dollars. Um, editing software, I like Splice on. They have it on Android now and an and, and, and iPhone. If you got a Mac, uh, this year is actually a twenty eleven Mac Air. You can get them for seventy five bucks. This uh, I'm really fine. Um, I got this specifically for GarageBand. So when I go play live, I wanted a, a cheap computer that gets broken or someone spills beer on it or whatever. I won't break my heart or whatever. And so. Um, uh, GarageBand works great on here, and I can use it for uh, music. If, if you're a podcast, Audacity works great on it. It's got you know USB. You can plug in a USB microphone that you can buy for thirty, forty dollars and get good audio. And the previous panel was on uh, voice acting. I think I saw some couple of friends in here that um, uh, obviously must be interested in doing some voice acting. So if y'all got a cam, uh, y'all get a microphone. Uh, you know, the Shure 58 was, is the one that, that we use so much for live audio. And they have basically kind of got that one for USB, so for $100 range, you get a really good dynamic microphone. Condensers are slightly better, but the dynamic is durable. You can drop it, and it would still work. That's how I recommend you drop microphones, don't do that. But uh, the 58, the Shure 58 was the one that we use, well, we still use forever. And I record a lot of songs with, with one of those, just because it is a good sound. Um, and today, happily, uh, technology has gotten to be so economical that all of us can have a cool podcast studio. Well, most of us still may have a Zoom studio from the, the pandemic as well. I still got like, one set of the case. I don't think it's going to happen now, but uh, at my house, I've got a little Zoom studio, so if I need to go teach right away, I can just go roll out of bed and go into my studio and start teaching and go back to bed, I guess, after that's done. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the idea of Zoom technology is another thing that's been really fascinating to me, that we can do conferences and get together remotely and uh, talk to, you know, fans from all over the world, honestly. If you're into cosplay, if you're into any of the fandoms, you can talk to people very easily online. Um, as an educator, for research purposes, I can interview people that I could never afford to bring to the college but I can talk to them on Zoom, and it's almost like you got a, a little bit of a connection because you are seeing them and talking to them. Um, so that's some, that's some cool aspects. I'm trying to think anything else I want to talk about. Oh, yeah, I'll talk about one last thing, if that's okay. Um, just because I think it's kind of interesting. Um, but for the pandemic, and I'm going to do this again, is, and you guys are here in the street, um, you guys are pretty close to the street board, um, and Dallas area. Being a background actor. <clears throat> so I went to film school. <clears throat> I went to LA for two weeks and I thought, what's the fastest way to get on a set? Well, because I made films, the Rise of the Robots, I needed extras. The bad guys on here are, is everybody's turn 
everybody uses a cell phone. And that's my zombies, the robots turn people that are using their phones, and that's basically where the zombies and they gotta fight the robots and this thing. Anyways. It was hard because I couldn't have money to build a background. But Hollywood, they can pay 80 bucks a day, hundred bucks a day for for what they used to call them extras. Now they call them background actors. And what an extra is, is that if Tom Cruise is in Mission Impossible and he walks in a restaurant and nobody's in there, it looks fake. So they need people sitting in a restaurant look like they're eating. They need to be dressed up. They pay people for that. So uh, in 20, yeah, 2018 was the first time I was, I was able to go to LA. I thought, I'm just gonna go out there and try. Once a simple casting, I'm in a room with a bunch of models, all these young people that look like they're straight out of, you know, a magazine, you know, just, you know, just, anyways, gorgeous people in there. And here I am, middle-aged guy, you know, overweight, and thinking, okay, but I'm going there with my suit and tie because that's just what I look like. <clears throat> um, going there, take a picture, uh, hit shots and stuff, and <clears throat> I'm walking around <clears throat> UCLA because I'm just kind of interested in schools because I teach in academia, get a text, are you available for the rookie tomorrow? And I said, yes, absolutely. So within one day, <clears throat> I'm going to Central Casting. <clears throat> one day later, I'm on, I'm on set. And uh, if you know the rookie, you know who's the star of the rookie? Anybody seen a show, the rookie on ABC? There's a little show called Firefly, the captain. Anybody know? Yeah. Nathan, uh, is a Philly in Nathan, anyways. So this is like the third or fourth episode, the third or fourth episode, because it's a brand new series for him. The, the, the plot is that he's 40 years old and he goes back to become a, a, a police officer in Los Angeles. So we're on the subway. Believe it or not, I didn't know that before I went there. LA has a subway. So I'm sitting on the subway and there's an empty seat in between tanks. Guess who sits right next to me? The captain of the Firefly is sitting right next to me. And I'm thinking, because you can't talk to the actors, and you can't take a selfie. I was thinking, man, you know, people at Comic Cons would pay money to do this. And here I am, sitting right next to, I, mean, I, I don't know if it might be, I love Firefly. I was a big, big Firefly fan. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting next to the captain of Firefly, man. This is fantastic. And they're paying me, and they're feeding me also. <laughs> so, uh, and, and actually, on here, you know, we can see it. A few more people actors will look at it. I got some pictures of of various things that I did there. Um, but I was on Fear the Walking Dead as a zombie, um, Shameless. Um, so there's a see there, and I'm that brand at the, at the breakfast. There's the, I don't know, there's the There it is there. So you can't really see me much, but I'm right there. There's the Captain the Firefly right there. And I think that, you know, that is it's kind of cool to do that. The reason why I bring this up, if you have an interest in making films, if you have interest in being in film, and the second time I went back, I basically paid for my trip by doing background work. So my Airbnb was like 700 bucks, it was 200 bucks to fly there. So I made enough money to pay for my trip there. And, it, it, and I don't have food because I eat anywhere, you know. You know I'm, I'm here from Nacogdoches, I gotta eat that entire anyway, so you know, I'll eat anywhere. And while I was on there on Saturday, because they, they, they typically shoot movies on Monday through Friday, because it's a job, and it's like any other job. Well, on Saturday, I said, you know what, I'm going to go see, um, let's make a deal. I get on it as a contestant. So I go in there, I have no clothes. So what I did was I took my nerd glasses, I put some paper on it, spaz, I don't know, like, like some nerd. Anyways, I had a suit on, and that was what I went out there as, and, uh, you know, and I got a little energy because I'm an actor and I'm teaching. And I got personality. And I didn't think I got picked because it was like really far in the back. And when uh, I get called, uh, when Wayne Brady calls, Herbert, come on down. And I'm like, and he goes to me, come on, Herbert. I didn't, I didn't think he was talking to me because I'm, I'm in shock. So I didn't win, but I got to go over there and talk and, and be on a game show also. So uh, I want to have $100 because they gave $100 to everybody. But anyways, um, and uh, and I'm walking away because uh, I'm, I'm walking to a bus because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as economical there in LA as I can. My goal there is to be a, a, a starving actor, basically. That's kind of my, my mindset. And uh, so $25 gets you on the bus and subway. And when it comes to that, 
as close I could to the set, then take the Uber or Lyft the last mile or two or whatever it is, and that saves a lot of money. Uh, for me. And you get to meet a lot of really interesting people on public transportation in, uh, in various cities as well. So I'm a writer. A lot of cool stories I've gotten is kind of just like watching, oh, that's interesting there. All right, I haven't thought about that. So uh, anyways, the cool thing that you all live next to uh, Shreveport, it's not too far away from here, in Dallas, it's not too far away from here. Uh, you've, heard, you've heard of the show, The Chosen. Some of y'all might have seen that TV show or heard that show. Uh, they needed extras, like a lot of extras up in the Dallas area. Uh, 20, uh, was it was 1883. Uh, uh, you guys, I don't know if you saw that film from the TV show. They needed a lot of extras for that, and that was up in the, Dow the Dallas area. So within driving the area, y'all can do this. And everybody here can be in the background because Hollywood wants the whole rainbow of the country. Doesn't matter if you're tall, short, thin, overweight, whatever. Age range, it doesn't matter. Uh, they need America. And, and, and the reason why, you can't have a bunch of models in a restaurant because it looks like a rock model for restaurants, for models. You know, it needs to look like America. The reason why I got cast because I'm a middle-aged guy is overweight. I look like a judge, a lawyer. I look like someone who would be sitting on a bus coming home after work. So in some ways, I might get cast more than when I was eight, and if I was, you know, not that I was great looking at 18 years old, but whatever. Um, if you're some model looking person that's in their, you know, teenagers, you know, like that. And I'm kind of a good point right now because I am, most actors at this age have given up because they had to get a job. So for me to go out there for two weeks, two, uh, two weeks a year, um, is, I think it's a good thing. The other thing, um, I kind of know when, the pilot season is, where they start, start filming again. And it's in like the first week of August. Um, so that's kind of the time frame I go out there is because I know they're filming a lot of stuff and they need fresh faces because they're, they're, they're finally getting back in the swing. With Netflix and Hulu, they, there really isn't a pilot season like it used to be, but ABC and NBC and all these stations, they, they basically start filming in August. They have shows ready for late September, early really October. And so even though we don't watch television, we watch it on Hulu, we watch it, you know, we binge it on Netflix when it gets on there eventually. So, um, you know, it, it's, a lot, it's a lot of fun. Um, I got to be in Olympus has fallen over in Shreveport. And I think Shreveport's not too far from here, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah so it's not too far away to do some background work here. Um, if you're close to New Orleans, it, it, that's where the main work is today. But, you know, I'm walking around, um, you know, studios, um, that, uh, you know, like I, I was a big fan of, um, of, uh, the, of the Oracle. And I'm walking, I'm on the set, the Fox set, and uh, they say, hey, the Oracle's coming in, let's go in there. I'm thinking, ah, I can't go in there, but I wanted to so bad. But another, uh, and, uh, when I was watching it, I could see where they were filming at because I was walking those areas there uh, in, uh, during the, the oh, if you get on set, sorry, on, on, on um, studio, they don't give you a free lunch because they have cars taking their buy them. So I, I, I just sort of walk around for an hour. So I walked around looking at all these areas and they have a place that looks like a fake New York City there. And that was that scene that they filmed for the Oracle. I'm like, golly, that's just, it's pretty cool. And I'm sure I've seen it in a bunch of other places as well. So if you're into filmmaking, uh, I, I got to be on the Goldbergs episode that Christy Brinkley was on. Um, that was a National Lamp Lampoon's uh, vacation one. And, uh, they, had work, and they took us out to, it was a $45 Uber ride at four in the morning to get out to this uh, cowboy town out there that I'm sure they filmed a bunch of westerns back in the day. I'm thinking, you know, this is really cool. Um, and uh, anyways, like I said, uh, you can potentially pay for a lot of your trip that way as well. So, uh, uh, and then I was planning to go out again, then the pandemic happened, so anyways. But uh, at some point, it would it, be over. It's getting, it looks like it's getting over, over, at least a little bit. Um, so, anyways, that's kind of a cool little part. So, uh, I've been talking a whole lot. If any of you all have some questions now or some observations or anything I've, I've talked about that's interesting, I can keep on talking if you want. But. How do you feel about the use of uh, YouTube and things like that for multimedia? As far as the putting it in store, uh, putting YouTube addresses in stories. Um. Uh, 
and cross platform. It's sort of like a, using YouTube on. Um, yeah, like um, used to the year instead of. Used to the movies when they would show a phone number or something like that. Oh, it was always. Five by five. Yeah. Uh, and now, if they, if they show a YouTube address or if they show um, one of the Q codes or if they show a uh, phone number, you've got to have it set up to where something is there for the fans. Yeah, um, well, uh, uh, on a side note, what I, I, I'll, um, domain names is the cheapest way to get your advertising out. This is the rise of the robots, it's too big. The robotfilm.com will take you to it. Uh, the film, I, oh, the, the, one of the short films I have is NAC Vice, N-A-C Vice, like Miami Vice, but NAC Vice. And you know, 10, 20 bucks a year, that domain name gets you somewhere, uh, takes you to a YouTube link. So I think for advertising purposes, I think it could be potentially really cool to have that. Now, I do notice that people make their own thick versions of social media because they don't want to TikTok or Facebook or YouTube or whatever. And I just look at man, it took some time to get somebody in other department to make all that, to make that work. Uh, as an independent filmmaker, uh, not that I'm, not, yeah, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not, not a legal expert, but if you're not focusing on, say this Coca Cola sign, if you're not, if that's not the focus of the scene, then if, it's, this, if you're doing a pan scene when you're walking, you're like there's McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever, that, that's fine because that's just out there in the background. So you can use that. So yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting thought. Uh, I really, I guess, I haven't thought about it too much other than I can see it potentially for driving people to your own um, channel. And, and along with that, I'll, I'll share with this uh, the idea of branding. 2004, three, two, I started calling myself the internet legend. Okay, no one did, no one called me that. And I got the internetlegend.com and all that stuff, and that's, that's kind of my moniker. Now, it ain't true. But if you say something enough, and that's your brand, then at some point it will stick. So that's one thing I would share with you all as well, is to pick something that you're known for. Like cosplayers have a cosplay name usually, and, and that's your brand, and that's what you're gonna use for you know, to TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and all your uh, web, uh, email, all that stuff. It makes it easy for you to be able to, uh, um, you know, to, to have that brand going on. So uh, it's fun, you know, 20 blah, blah years later and so like that. And again, I've had some success on YouTube. Uh, I've had some million view, well, one million view on TikTok. Um, and that was just, again, trying to make a, a, a viral video. What it was, I had, had an older Honda Accord, a 2002 one. I put the key on it. And I know there's a transponder. I always carry a backup key to uh, unlock. That's a tip. But, but no, I mean, most of y'all probably don't have cars with keys anymore, but anyway. Just, I carry one in my wallet just in case I got locked out and that way I'm not down to somebody coming let me into my car. Um, so you put the anyway, put the transponder on that, that key to turn the car over. Anyways, and they're like saying, no, you're faking, it's, it's on there, and people say, oh no, no, he's lying, it's, it's true, it does happen. Anyways, so they're arguing about whether it's a true video or not. And I think that's what got the news up on there. But it did show me that once again on TikTok, now, again, I wasn't trying to do anything other than I know how-to videos are always popular, but that one wasn't because of the how-to, it was because people were thinking that I was lying about starting a car with your backup key. So, uh, and when I say I'm making videos or viral videos, I don't think you can make it. Uh, they, they're, usually you can make things, multiple uh, emotions, you know? So something that's funny or scary or whatever. Um, but I think in a lot of ways, the ones, the videos that we watch that are viral, are organic, they just kind of happen. And so if you film a lot, you got a lot of better chance of making something organic than something that's not. And I think going back to that first thing I talked about is letting your emotions, uh, letting your feelings, letting your creativity just, just come out. That really, I think, is the most important part of that. Well, any more questions from our friends out there? What was your inspiration for uh, for YouTube or uh, both? You know, I, I think one of the biggest things initially, honestly, what I love that I could write a song, make a video, and throw it on YouTube, and have someone from you know around the world see it. That was fascinating to me. 
for the distribution model of that. And so I could write a blues song or whatever and make a video and edit it and post it on YouTube within a day. I thought that was amazing. And really, in a lot of ways, I think what I'm doing is a big long-term art project. How long can a person put something on, on, on YouTube daily? Now, I know that today there's folks that do that, have a lot more, have, people have infinite, I mean, I finally got 10 million views, which was a cool, cool milestone for some, some guy in East Texas. Uh, but people make, you know, you know was Mr. Beast does that in three seconds, you know, he, he gets tons of views and, and all that. So it, that metric has completely changed uh, a lot. Um, but the part of it is the, is the challenge of it as well. I think it's a cool challenge to have your creativity go um, and make something every day as well. Any other questions from our friends out there? Or any thoughts? Or any? Yes? Do you think that audiences today expect any certain amount of polished print content today? Yes. Now, there's two parts of it. If it's, if it's good information, I think as long as you can hear it and see it, that's fine. Uh, but golly, you know, you see stuff today that looks like a newscast. You see stuff that looks like a, you know, slick as a, as a, as a, as any TV show that's ever been on, on air. Um, and can you do that? You can. Um, can I do that? I can. It takes time and money to do that. I got a day job teaching. And I teach the history of rock and roll, history of jazz. So I'm very fortunate. I, I got to do a lot of really cool things in my life. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I talked about the Sex Pistols on Friday, you know, they were about so talking about punk rock music. That's awesome. I just I love punk rock music. Um, but, um, yeah, in, 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 a, in a lot of ways that with very little money today, you can make something look really professional. You really can. A couple of lights, a couple of uh, good cameras, and stuff that, stuff that would cost you, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to do today are really in hundreds of dollars a day. And um, I think the, the bigger thing, though, is if you're doing something because you've got a passion for it and like it, um, one thing that I do with my creativity is I work on a screenplay every day until it's done. I don't take days on it. Uh, when I write an academic paper, I work on it every day until it's done. Um, when I edit a film, same thing. I do something every single day until it's done. And because like, you take time off, a week comes by, three weeks goes by, ten weeks goes by, then you're never going to get back to it. My mindset for me is that I want that focus on that project until I get it done. And then I go on to the next thing. But yeah, today uh, I think I mean I like I like really good looking content, but also I like the viral videos that have no con no production value in it as well. So I think we're all kind of that way. We, we like what's good. We like what's entertaining. We like what matches us as individuals. But that's awesome. Well, friends, I really appreciate y'all uh, spending your lunch time with me out here uh, at the Tyler. Uh, Comic convention and while my dad and I, it's always I always love coming up to Tyler and whatnot because you have a few more food options than I have up in Nacogdoches, so I always enjoy that as well. And I love for y'all to come out to the NAC Short Film Festival, and I look I look forward to seeing some uh, the film festivals up here in Tyler as well. So thank you all so much today. I really appreciate y'all. Thank you. So much. That was really fun, y'all. Thank you all for coming out.